we begin with what may be a precedent setting question in a lawsuit filed in South Florida this week that for the first time argues for the rights of an unborn child in a question having nothing to do with abortion rights. In this case, it's about the unborn being in jail. The video you are about to see is a group of people in a van just before one of them fires a gun. That is the woman now in jail on murder charges and about to give birth. This video, never before made public, is being used now as evidence in the court cases. At issue now for the 3rd District Court of Appeals, the mother, who is a Miami-Dade County jail inmate, is asking to be released from jail because the unborn child within her is not charged with any crime. A bill filed this week in Tallahassee coincidentally addresses similar issues, and we're going to talk with that about that with the Senate sponsor in just a little while. But first, the attorney making the extraordinary argument for an unborn child to be released from jail. William Norris is here with us this morning live, and we so appreciate it. Bill, it is so good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. So this is, you know, rarely do we have an attorney who filed a lawsuit on this week in South Florida right up front, but this is such an extraordinary filing. An unborn child in custody for no crime is what your lawsuit says. Have you heard any legal argument about the rights of an unborn that does not include uh, some question of abortion rights? This We couldn't find any, so we're calling this precedent setting. Have you? I think that it is precedent setting in its application. The, uh, the, it, it's grounded on the fact that an unborn child is a person. And the uh, U.S. Constitution and the uh, Florida Constitution grant any person uh, the right not to be deprived of liberty uh, without due process of law. And so I just want to really make clear for our, our audience that this woman's name, the inmate, the mother, her name is Natalia Harrell. We are not here this morning to argue the merits or not of her criminal case or, or anything that she may or may not have done. We're simply focusing on the rights of an unborn child because, frankly, that is one of the overarching themes of last session and possibly abortion rights uh, debate to come in this upcoming legislative session. And so I really wanted to drill down into your argument. Um, there, there is nothing that I read in your argument that talks about at what point in development this unborn child receives its own rights. Is there, what, what's your take on that? The motion makes no take on it because in this case, the, uh, the unborn child is uh, seven or eight months along. And clearly uh, uh, under, under any uh, you know, pre-abortion rights uh, jurisprudence uh, is, is, is fully, is a person. Uh, has two arms, two legs, uh, two eyes, and and uh, is, is completely viable. So at this point in this one case, that unborn child would be a, literally a month maybe from birth, and if in if it turns out to be a premature birth, uh, viable outside its mother's womb. Medically, I believe that's correct. Yes. And so if, if you, when you take this case, I should say, when you take this case, I think this week there is a hearing in front of the appellate court. What you're asking them is to, what, release this unborn child from custody? Is that the essential question? Well, most, what is most important is that the, the fact that the unborn child is there, uh, is a person involved in the equation, has to be taken into consideration. Uh, and uh, to this point, there's been no consideration of the unborn child's rights at all. Uh, that it, it's very often that there's a relationship between two persons, a mother and a born child, for example, that can influence what the courts will do with the mother. Uh, and we're, we're simply asking that the rights of the unborn child uh, be considered and be addressed. And what do you see that, uh, what's the choice there? What, what do you see its logical conclusion being. You, you've well, actually asked for the release. We've asked for release and, and uh, we, we're looking for the opportunity of the unborn child to, uh, to, to, to be developed and born ultimately in a safe environment, not in the environment that it's in right now, 
which is dangerous pods within TGK. And also then the, for the unborn child to have access to proper uh, prenatal care. Uh, uh, let me let me just um, I know that's very much a part of your your piece. We did reach out in anticipation of talking about this. And, and in fairness, we did reach out to Miami-Dade uh, Corrections and Rehabilitation. And we did get a statement this morning. A statement, of course, isn't news, but it definitely is a reaction to a question. So if we can put that up on the screen, I just want to read to you the Corrections and Rehab uh, Partners. It says with Jackson to provide health care to inmates in custody and ensuring inmates receive the medical care professional timely and appropriate um, and they're doing a full review of the services in this case rendered to your client um, and so that that is definitely a component and a component in the bill that we're about to talk about with state Sev senator chevron jones uh, coming up later in this program um, here's the essential question that a as the attorney for this one woman in this one case you know there's going to be people watching this asking in the broader question, releasing criminals and accused criminals on the basis of being pregnant or about to give birth raises a lot of public safety issues. There are going to be people who ask that. How do you respond to that? Well, first off, clearly the public safety issues need to be addressed. Uh, but in, in this particular case, uh, you mentioned uh, Senator Jones's bill. Uh, it provides for release uh, of a of a of a woman who's about to give birth who's been convicted and sentenced. Uh, in this case, uh, the mother, Miss Harrell, uh, hasn't been convicted of anything. She's been accused, uh, as the videotape that you played shows. There's compelling evidence, but she has a a stand your ground immunity defense that her her attorney, her criminal attorney, is going to assert. So yes. her conviction is by no means certain. Yes, and, and absolutely, I'm glad you qualified that because what I meant was not th in this particular case, um, and everyone is presumed uh, not guilty until they, innocent until they are proven guilty, and so Ms. Harrell is the same. But in a broader policy sense, if you are successful in releasing this unborn child from jail, in general, that brings up that, those rights for pregnant women who may have already been presumed uh, or who have already been convicted, or maybe someone who is still pending a court case who might have a criminal past and a violent criminal past. So it might be someone other than Mrs. Harrell who we're talking about here. And kind of those broader implications, I think, is something that I wanted to hear you address and I think people might be concerned about. The fact that the matter should be raised and considered uh, is, is absolutely certain. Uh, as you have posed what ifs that are, are more serious and more significant, uh, you, you can go down the scale of severity as well. Uh, a woman who is denied bond for whatever reason, uh, just because of an accusation, uh, I mean, that's society deals with that. That's the that that's a question which is addressed in the courts on a routine basis. The question that is raised in this lawsuit is something that is not considered, has not been raised, and that as a person, the unborn child's constitutional rights, as it relates and, to yeah. custody in uh, in a jail or prison. It's really fascinating. Bill Norris, um, we will be following how you progress in the courts, a precedent setting case, and we appreciate uh, you allowing us to really make a lot of this public today on This Week in South Florida. Great to have you. Thank you.